okay already. I know, I know. It's a boring shelf. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. I'm in the next installment of tool racks on the French cleat wall. And if you haven't been following this, I've been doing a whole series of different tool racks and things like that on the French cleat wall. This has been a lot of fun to kind of compile and work out where everything is going and I, I'm really enjoying this process. Today I'm making a rack for all of the boring and drilling tools that I use here. Um, this is mostly braces and then the um, egg beater drill bits and then my main set of auger bits and so it's all right here and very easy access. Uh, this is very similar to the shelf I made for the mallets but in this case it has a shelf uh, for the drill bits and I want to go into a little bit about what this is so we'll be talking about the, the, the shelf here as well as how the rest of this is made. Uh, it's a fairly simple process but let's dive in and take a look. So in this project, I'm going to start just about the same place I've started with all of these other uh, tool storage projects. I'll lay things out on my bench and try and figure out how would they best fit. Um, where would they best be and sort them around and try and figure out how much space is this actually going to take out. A lot of this has been in my brain for a while, but I, I kind, of, kind of settled on this idea after putting everything in place. First thing I need to do is cut up a piece of white oak. This will end up being the shelf. It's about uh, 38 inches long. And in this case, there's a big knot in the middle of it, which isn't a problem at all. I'm gonna clean up the ends with my shooting board. You don't see me use the shooting board a lot because most of the time I just kind of uh, gloss over that. But I do have a video on making this shooting board and you know it needs, it needs to be sharpened when it kind of stalls like that. But uh, yeah, I'm also going to be doing the live edge on the front of this like I did on the mallet rack and on the large shelf above. Uh, so it has that uh, the, the sapwood and bark um, right underneath so I can clean it up and kind of give it that slightly natural feel while still having a square shelf. I'll hit it with the uh, draw knife and spoke shave to clean it up and keep that natural flow. And then it's on to uh, working on the next piece. In this case, it's going to be that small lip that is in front of the shelf, keeping things from falling off the front of the shelf. I want to round over the corners on it, uh, so rather than using a chisel or anything of that nature to round it, I just use the plane to quickly work my way around it. You can see how I'm working from one side all the way up and around to the top. That'll give me a nice, clean, general round shape on it. Then I'll come back in with a file and just smooth it out, and I've got a perfectly smooth, smooth rounded edge that uh, actually looks really good. I can glue that onto the front of the shelf and now it is well basically done. Um, I just need to make the supporting structure for underneath. Now on the uh, the supporting board that goes along the back of it there are two angular pieces, uh, cleats that come out on either end to actually support the weight of the shelf. Uh, for these I'm just cutting them at 45 degrees and uh, I'll cut down as far as the saw can and then flip it over and then cut the rest away. And I'm just following a line and cutting along it. That's gonna leave the edge slightly rough and I can just put it in the vise and uh, clean that up quickly. The 45 degree grain really cleans up nicely and I, I really enjoy that part. Now that I have these done, I want to put a dovetail on either end to connect it to the backboard. And I'm doing the exact same thing I've done in the past with all the other um, shelving units. So if you want more detail on that, I do have a video on actually doing the dovetails. But I like to gang cut the tails first and then gang cut off the, uh, the scraps on either end. And this is always fun when they just pop right off. Yay! <laughs> then I'll just come in with the chisel and clean out that very corner where the saw doesn't quite get back into. And hitting it from either side, you get that really nice clean edge and a good look at my bald spot. <laughs> now we can put that on the end of the board and lay out where the pins will be. And after drawing that out, then I can come into the saw, cut down to the depth stop, and the, the starting line and the depth stop are the only marks I make on the board. Everything else is done by eye. Um, even keeping it vertical and square is just done with the reflection in the saw. A very simple, very quick process. It probably only takes like 10 minutes total to do both dovetails. And the joint fits perfectly right off the saw. I didn't even have to clean this one up with a chisel. The next thing is I need in the shelf a bunch of holes for all of the braces and drills to sit in. Um, I'm using a one inch auger bit and I'm spacing them out uh, three inches to two inches, um, different spacing so that I can put in different bits at different sizes. 
I'll drill from one side most of the way through, let the, uh, the, the lead screw poke through, but not actually bust through. That way I don't get all those blown out chips on the backside. I'll flip the board over and then bore in from the other side. Now with all the holes uh, cut in, I want to cut a slot back to the hole on each of these. So I'll put the marking knife up against it, put the square on that, and then draw a line out. And then I can come into the saw. And I just follow the saw line. You can see I didn't put in a knife wall. Uh, I just cut right along the saw line and I get a really nice clean cut all the way down. In this case, it happened to be perfect where the bottomed out of the saw was the depth I needed to cut. I'm just cutting to the, well, the edge of the circle so that this piece will then pop out. A fairly quick and easy task. And uh, there you go. That little bit on the edge, then I'll just come back in with a file and uh, smooth that out. The next thing is uh, attaching the shelf itself to that uh, bracket with the angles. I'm just going to be using screws because I might want to change this in the future. So I'm not 100% sure uh, if I'm going to, but uh, the screws will allow me to do that. The cleat that actually attaches it to the French cleat is like this so that you can um, you can slide it on from the top but it won't fall forward and fall off. And I do that by slowly adjusting this block on the bottom um, until it can pivot down onto the cleat without falling forward off of it. And then I just hold that together with screws um, just because screws are quick and easy and that way I don't have to worry about the, the glue failing in the future. This cleat block can then get screwed to the back of the shelf and it's ready to play with. And that's about it for the project other than finish. Now for this, I decided to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna use a multi-stage high-end polyurethane. <laughs> okay, who am I kidding? Uh, boiled linseed oil and paste wax. Um, I love the way boiled linseed oil brings out the color in this white oak. It just is, it's gorgeous and it's an easy wood, to, easy finish to work with. You really can't mess it up. And I have several videos on making my own boiled linseed oil and paste wax. It goes on quick. It's a simple finish, um, great for shop projects and when you just want them to look good. Um, not extremely durable, but the quality is fantastic on the, the way they look. After that, it's uh, putting everything in place and uh, then enjoying the shelf. And one more thing done. I'm really liking how this came out and looking forward to using it in the future. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It is a, another process done and I'm really looking forward. I have two more things that I wanna make. Um, I wanna make a rack for the spoke shaves and card scrapers, as well as a rack for all the rasps, files, and screwdrivers. So those will be two more videos coming up soon and they'll be following um, in the other corner. <laughs> this is kind of a, a cool setup and I'm looking forward to what I'm gonna need here. I do have another place where I use some of the rarely used um, auger bits that I don't keep here. So some people might be saying, wow, there isn't that much space here. Well, these are like 99% of the time, these are the bits I'm going to be using. And so they're all right here and within easy access. So I hope you like this video. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this. If you'd like to find out more about that, Patreon's right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some other behind the scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today. And until next time. Have a wonderful day.